All right, today we're going to be going through the carburetor set on a Yamaha FZR600. This is going to be an inline four, so we've got four carburetors here that are almost identical, so I'm just going to go through one in great detail. The other ones, I'm just going to do a quick overview and kind of show you different spots on there and how they differ. First thing, First thing we're going to do is pull this bottom bowl off here. We've got four screws in the bottom here. I'm going to disassemble this carburetor here. Um, but you do have to pull this bowl off uh, to get this one off as well because these lines are hooked up together and uh, you may be able to finagle it off of there but I don't want to damage this plastic fitting here or ruin those o-rings so I'm gonna go ahead and pull all eight of these Phillips screws going back together keep in mind you don't have to torque these down a whole bunch it just makes them a challenge coming off the next time all right when we get all of those screws off there I'm gonna pull them off here I want to show you one more quick thing before I finish pulling this bowl off. We've got a drain screw on each of these bowls and it takes a Phillips screwdriver. It's right here on the bottom and if you loosen this up uh, while it's on the motorcycle, obviously tip the other direction, all the fuel is going to run out these bottom ports here. Uh, I do suggest you put a fuel line on there or a vent hose. That way you're not running that fuel directly onto your motor because it caused some uh, discoloration. Uh, so you want to make sure you've got a fuel line on there. Second thing is, is if your uh, bike is bouncing around, if you're trailering it or hauling it somewhere, your, your motorcycle could bounce around and fuel will dump out this port here, which is why it's good to have a fuel line on there so it's not uh, draining onto your motor as well. Uh, but that typically happens when you're hauling motorcycles somewhere if you don't have the fuel shut off. So the other thing you could do is just drain that fuel before you haul it anywhere. Uh, just go ahead and loosen these up a couple turns and fuel will start to drain out these bottom nipples here. So here is the bottom bowls here. This is a rubber o-ring that uh, if you order a gasket kit or a, a rebuild kit, this o-ring will come with it. Sometimes you can reuse these o-rings. Uh, if you have a kit, make sure you put a, a new gasket in there. These fittings here, these o-rings will sometimes wear. So you want to make sure that those are in good condition. Uh, before going back together. So there's the bottom bowls. A lot of times what happens is uh, debris will get caught down here and will sit in here because your carburetor is actually sitting like this. Uh, all that heavy dirt will sink to the bottom there and you start your motorcycle. A lot of times what happens is it'll pull that pull that dirt and debris up through your jets here, plug those jets up, causing it to not to run very well. Uh, could potentially get stuck in a jet and then you'll have uh, long term until you clean these jets you'll have, your motorcycle won't run correctly. What happens a lot of times is the pilot jet gets plugged because of how small those orifices are and then you'll have a hard time starting your motorcycle. So, got those bowls off there. We've got three jets here. The one that's kind of deep down into the carburetor itself is called the pilot jet. I'm gonna tip that up there so you can see. It uh, takes a small screwdriver, you stick it down in here. I like to use this size of screwdriver as opposed to this size. And you may say there's not a whole lot of difference there, but the, the size of the head really matters on this because if you go down in there with too small of a screwdriver, what you're gonna do is turn kind of in between the two, the two flat areas of that jet. You're gonna round that jet off of there, causing all kinds of damage to that jet. So if you can have a screwdriver that'll fit down in there, as large a head as possible, that'll still fit down in there, you can take and unscrew that uh, successfully. So you don't wanna round that off, once those are rounded off, uh, you've got to have that drilled out and re-tapped. And those are extremely important orifices to have the right size. Uh, you may end up just buying a new carburetor at that point. So pilot jet there, I'm going to pull that out. That is, a, I believe, from the factory is a 32.5 pilot jet. Once you've got it loosened up, you can just take your carburetor, flip it over, and that is what your pilot jet looks like. There's a very, very small orifice, like I said, but you will want to, when you... Uh, pull that jet out. You want to make sure you can hold that up to light and see through it. You can take carbon choke cleaner, blow through it, uh, take compressed air, blow through it. Just make sure it's clean. Make sure you can see through it. If you can't see through it, I suggest grabbing a, uh, a jet cleaner such as this, all different sizes here. And I actually had to make even a smaller one yet for some of the carburetors that I've gone through uh, to, to push through there. And these, uh, a lot of times, will have ribs on there. That, that works well for cleaning out those jet. So that's your pilot jet. Next will be your secondary main, which is going to be this one here. And then you've got your main jet here. We're going to pull this secondary main jet out. And this is a bigger orifice than your pilot jet will be, 
but smaller than your main jet. So this one is a 52.5, and you want the same thing, you want to be able to see through there, blow through it with compressed air. And then we've got our main jet here, and this is 112, I believe, and yours may be slightly different than this, um, depending on your altitude riding condition, what you have done to your motorcycle. Same thing, you want, to be see, you want to see through this. Your orifice on this one is going to be bigger than the other two. So if you're having a hard time figuring out which one's which, hold them up to light, see which one has a bigger orifice, and that is going to be your main jet, which sticks in right there. The other thing here, we've got a six millimeter. Uh, this is a six millimeter cap. And what this covers up is just your needle. And I'll show you, I'll show you that needle a little bit more uh, when we get to it, but that needle uh, hooks up to your slide here and it's gonna go up and down as air flows through your motorcycle. That's gonna pull this up, allowing more fuel to suck up through that main jet. So that, that needle is adjustable, um, but you wanna make sure you pull this here. This is a brass cap, and then you've got a brass washer underneath there. You can see that needle right there. You wanna make sure that that area is all cleaned out. Now, what I wouldn't suggest doing is taking compressed air, and at this point, blowing on this needle here, you're gonna shoot that jet up um, out of its out of its spot and I'll show you that when I get up in there but um, I wouldn't suggest taking compressed air and blowing through that uh, right now at this point. So we've got our needle and seat here is what they call this underneath here. This is a uh, your float here. This is your needle and then right here is your seat. These seats have a tendency of wearing out. You can replace these and what's kind of unusual about this and there's not a lot of them like this. This is a plastic seat. You can take you just kind of wiggle that out. There's an o-ring that holds that together and this is your seat area here, and these are easily replaced. You also have a filter in here uh, on the end there. Your fuel line, like I said at the beginning, comes in here, runs down this rail here, and your fuel flows up through here. It's important that this O-ring seals. If this O-ring does not seal, you're constantly going to be having fuel dripping out of your, your carburetor here. So if you've got a fuel leak on your floor, your shop, or your garage every time you go out to your motorcycle, this would be one thing that you would want to check. The other thing you want to check is that your, your needle is, is uh, closing properly. You wanna make sure that this rubber tip on here is in good condition, it's not grooved or worn or completely missing. Also, you wanna make sure you don't have dirt and debris stuck in here between the, between the seat and the needle, as that'll cause that needle to be held open and that float to be held open, and that'll just constantly be letting fuel run into the bottom bowl of your carburetor and out your overflow. So these needles are adjustable and uh, you just adjust that by this rubber or this uh, metal tab here, and you want to do those on very very small increments. And you don't want to make you want to make sure that you don't do uh, too tight or too too open. Otherwise, you're going to have fuel leaking, or your bike's going to be running lean. So check your specs as to where this float height needs to be, or if you want to leave that in the comment below, I can I can check those specs for you and get exactly the measurement that needs to be and how to measure that. Uh, but if you've got constant issues with this, just, to, just replace that needle and seat, and a lot of times that'll fix your fuel dripping issue. So make sure this O-ring is good, like I said, set that back down in there, and you want to be careful, um, as this is plastic, uh, it can break very, very easily. And there's one spot that this is going to set, you just got to push it in there. You can use some kind of assembly loop to push that down in there, but I wouldn't use a whole lot, just basically enough to get it wet. Um, otherwise, you're gonna. Otherwise, it could potentially gum up uh, some jets. So, going back together, then make sure your needle sits down in that seat. This needle can go either direction; doesn't matter which direction it goes. Just make sure it slides on that uh, adjustable tab there. Slide it in there. Put your pin in, and your needle and seat are set to go. We've got our brass cap here for our main jet area. Make sure you've got a your brass washer on there before going back together. And that's a six millimeter cap. You can use a wrench or a, a socket there. These bowls here are actually going to push down on this plastic uh, seat here, so it will hold that secure right into place there. So again, make sure you've got your main jet in the correct location. Larger one goes right in the center. And I like to use, I, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but I like to use a larger screwdriver for these uh, larger jets so that we don't break off that brass um, jet there. And then we're ready to go back on there with our bowls here. So again, check these, make sure they're in good condition. O-rings if they need replaced. And then we'll take and slide these on there. Just like that. 
I will show you a couple more things on the bottom side of this carburetor and then we'll go to the top. So the other thing I want to show you is the air fuel screw. All right, air fuel screw on this machine is right here. There's one for each carburetor. And the way that you adjust that is you, um, or the way that you take and remove that, you wanna make sure that you screw it all the way in first. So right now from the factory, it'll be backed out a couple turns. A lot of times it's about a turn and a half to two and a half turns out. These happen to be a turn and a half out. So just to verify that, I'm gonna take my screwdriver, I'm gonna turn it in, half turn, one and a half, and that's where it is. Now pulling it out, you know that we gotta go a turn and a half out. And again, check your books to get the correct specs on there. But you can pull this all the way out, clean and blow through this area. And what you have for an order here, there's a lot of times we'll, a couple pieces will get stuck down in there. So we've got a washer here, and then we've got a spring, and then we've got our needle here. And there's sometimes an O-ring, and I don't know if that stayed down in there. Yeah, it looks like there's an O-ring still down in there. So you got O-ring, then you've got washer, and then you've got spring. So make sure you go back in that order. And I like to tip it sideways so that those pieces don't dump off as I'm putting them back together. And then again, screw it all the way in until it's completely seated. And then back it out a turn and a half. Half turn. One and a half. All right, we've got your idle adjust here, and that is going to go up, and you'll be able to see that adjusting here on your carburetor. So as you turn that clockwise, what that's doing is turning your throttle, uh, turning your throttle up would be clockwise. Your RPMs will go up. You want to make sure that your bike is completely warmed up when you start to do that. What that's doing is opening up these butterflies that you can see on this side. So adjusting the idle, open those butterflies up like that. So. Um, adjusting, sinking your carburetors, you've got uh, these screws here. This middle one is from the, coming in from the other side, and these screws here. What that's does, what that does, is open your butterflies the same amount. If you've got a a way to sink those carburetors, it's always a good idea to do that periodically, just to make sure they're in sync, all cylinders are working properly. So to go to the top now, flip these carburetors back over. You've got two screws on top here. Each each cap is. Uh, got two screws we can go ahead and undo these we've got a rubber diaphragm in here before I do that what I want to do is show you a little test if you take compressed air you can take and blow through here. and if you blow through it and blow through this top slot here you can see that it raises and lowers your slide there your needle underneath there is raised and lowered and you want to make sure that's sliding up and down properly not getting held up all right both screws are off here we're gonna go ahead and Pull those, be careful pulling this off. A lot of times these diaphragms will actually stick to uh, the cap. Sometimes they'll stick to the carburetor. And um, if you pull up and one side stuck to the other side, it will uh, rip this diaphragm. These diaphragms aren't cheap. So we've got our needle, or we've got, yeah, we've got our needle and our slide here. You just take, I like to take my finger, put them behind there, push up on it. And that is uh, the slide there with the needle on it. Now don't tip it upside down because there's some very, very small washers and springs and keepers in there. So what I like to do is then grab a small pair of pliers, stick them down in there. If you know the order of them, then you can tip them upside down. So, and we've got a washer that'll stay down in there. This, that goes on the bottom. But there's your needle there. It is adjustable. This clip can be set in different locations. There's your washer there. You've got a plastic spacer. So we've got washer, then we've got plastic spacer, then we have clip, then we have a small washer. And then on top of this, or I guess it'd be on the bottom of this spring, uh, you've got a, a plastic keeper and that holds the spring in place. It also holds that needle down. So I'm going back together then. These, like I said, these are adjustable and these are replaceable. So if you get a jet kit, a lot of times you'll come with a new needle. So I like to use my pliers to hold that in its place. That way I don't have any of those washers or spacers fall off of there. Take my spring, set it down in there. That'll center itself. This is directional, I'll only go one direction, so slide that down in there. You do want to make sure that your needle, though, is lined up with your main jet holder, your needle area down below there. Drop that down in there. Make sure that this seals properly, it sits in its groove. If it keeps on popping out and does keeps on doing one of these, 
Uh, maybe set it out in the sun a little bit, let it dry out if you got carbon choke cleaner on it. A lot of times that will uh, stretch those or shrink these and then you can set them in the sun and it'll kind of go back to its normal position. Uh, then take that, make sure that post is right in the center of that spring there. And then you can put your Phillips screws on there. And you can double check it with that test, that compressed air, to make sure that that uh, slide is going up and down like it should. And make sure that that diaphragm is sealing properly. So that is the carburetor on a Yamaha FZR600. If you got questions or comments, make sure and leave those below. If you got more um, videos you would like me to do on this year and model, make sure you leave those in the comments below as well. Please subscribe and like and share these videos. Thanks for watching.